get it loaded up. Um, so my name is Chuck Haas. I own Western Slope Connection. Uh, it's over on the west side of town by the car wash um, under the welding and steel sign. And if you've heard my commercials on KEJJ, you know I just spit out a little bit of my commercials. First off, I'd like to thank Eric for uh, inviting me uh, to talk to rural landowners uh, because I do deal with you guys quite often uh, in regards to broken steel, aluminum, things of that nature, and I'll go through um, some of my projects. Uh, I also want to thank the Gunnison County Farm Bureau for putting this on, and I'm also the vice president of the local chapter. So uh, thank you to the Farm Bureau for sponsoring this. Um, I worked hard last night and made some uh, brownie cupcakes for you guys. You'll, you'll know which ones they are when you see it later. Um, real quick history about myself. I moved to Gunnison in 1991 to go to college up here and didn't leave. And that's because this place is home to me. So um, I know several of you guys here in the crowd, and uh, so it's kind of easy to talk to you guys and say uh, what's up. I wear multiple hats, um, and I apologize if I sound like I got junk in my mouth. I do. I had a bunch of teeth pulled. I'm getting new teeth and so on and so forth. So um, anyway, um, Trying to get, let's start it. So I, I went to college up here, met my wife, who is a local, born and raised Gunnison girl. Terry McLean is her maiden name. Uh, and we got married. And so I grew up uh, the latter half of my life here out on the ranch up Quartz Creek. So I do have a background in some ranching. Um, I've got to enjoy what I, I called myself a born again cowboy. <laughs> so it's been fun to be able to do that. I get to go help them push the cattle into the high country in Taylor Park in the uh, spring and summertime and then round them back up in the fall. So that's kind of a background with that. Um, we've also done 4-H. Uh, I've uh, known Eric for the whole time he's been here in Gunnison. Um, and so my kids all had 4-H uh, animals. They've done mostly steer projects. Uh, my daughter's done a goat project. So I, I'm well aware of animals as well and taking care of animals and doing the right things with animals. I had about up to a dozen mama cows that we uh, wintered and took care of and things of that nature. So I, I have a small uh, view of what Lee Spann's done for most of his life. So, um, so with that, uh, the one other thing I wanted to tie back into really quick that Scott was talking about with the fires and the reason I can say that is I'm a 22-year veteran of the volunteer fire department here in Gunnison. When we burn in the summertime, which is fine, um, it's preferable if you burn at like 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning and get it done before 10 o'clock in the morning because about 10 o'clock every day, the wind's going to pick up and carry that thing and go crazy with it. We don't mind coming out and helping you put it out. But just know if you didn't call it in, there might be some serious consequences involved with not calling in your fire. Um, and we also, um, just to kind of tie in with that with Scott, um, I'm, I'm almost certain that we would be willing to come out and assist in a burn. Several of us are, are uh, certified in wildland fire and things of that nature, so we kind of know how to burn something more correct um, so that we don't get ourselves in trouble with the fire. So. With that being said, now we'll go on to what I do day in and day out, and that is, is that I run a welding shop. And I, it's a, there's several different welding aspects out there. There is um, underwater welding, which I don't do around here. Um, <laughs> uh, there's production welding, um, and that is like all your trailers uh, that you guys see driving up and down the road. Uh, that's kind of a production setup, and they weld all that stuff together in an assembly line and do that sort of thing. Um, what I do is a, a job shop, and, and that being said, I take just about any job you can think of and that's metal and, and work on that. And so I've done everything from welding the base back on to somebody's stainless steel spaghetti colander all the way up to putting structural steel like this building into different buildings and things of that nature. So I've kind of seen it all and done it all. So. Perfect, perfect. So 
Um, I've, owned, I've owned the welding shop since April of 2004. Um, I worked in the welding shop. I went to work there in um, July of 2001, so I've been in there for a while. So I kind of make it work. I've had several of you guys come in and do projects for you. I built a big structure for Danny Zadra for CPW. I've worked on Dave O'Brossler's equipment, uh, Rick Randall's equipment. I've done work with Nate as far as structural steel and stuff for his job at CK Construction. And Lee Span comes in and hogs the heat off of my floor every winter because he loves my floor in my shop. <laughs> so these are some of the, this is my portable truck. Um, and so if something's not able to be brought into my shop, I have the capabilities to come out to your um, home or whatever and work on stuff out there uh, as well. Um, so just kind of, you know, it is less expensive if you can bring it to my shop uh, than it is when I have to drive out to see what, what you need. These are some of the fun projects that we do at the shop. This is a wood rack that I built. Uh, that's the third wood rack that I've built in the 16 years that I've owned the shop. Um, a lot of people really like to have uh, that instead of the old wooden sideboards, and, and uh, so it's, it's been pretty, uh, pretty neat to be able to do that. I actually built one that uh, ties into a headache rack on the guy's pickup, and that was kind of fun for me to get figured out how to put that all together. So uh, I work on trailers. Um, this particular trailer here came in. The um, manufacturer uh, used a, a thinner type of metal to build the floor around the bottom of it and then tied in that axle. And the problem was is that it all rusted away because it came out of like Michigan or Pennsylvania or somewhere where they use salt and all that. So that hole underneath had rusted away. So I wound up picking the whole thing up and putting it up in the air like that uh, in order to rebuild a, a frame structure underneath that trailer. These are some of the handrails. Um, we, we do handrail, decorative, um, kind of plain Jane. A lot of people come in, oh, I just want a plain Jane rail. So this is kind of an example of a plain Jane rail, just some square tubing, some rec tubing um, that we put together. And we always uh, make sure we build everything to code um, so that um, when you, you know, put it in, if it's brand new construction, it has to be code. But if it's older, an older house, uh, when it comes time for you to sell that house, uh, one of the things that may happen is they're going to say, hey, is your guardrail, your handrails, all that sort of thing, are they up to code in regards to selling that house? So that's something I always try to involve the owners when I build these is that they're like, oh, well, you know, this is a 100-year-old house and, you know, we're never going to deal with it. And I said, yeah, but when you sell this and they come in and do that inspection, they are going to want to make sure that that thing is up to code. So... We try to, we try to uh, keep with uh, codes. This is a water pump um, that somebody found some hard water. <laughs> I, 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 st I steal that from uh, Tom Redden. Tom Redden brought me his uh, hot water tanks out of his RV trailer and he'd say, man, this water in Gunnison's really hard. <laughs> but what happens is you get busy in the fall, and you forget your ditch pump out there, and it'll crack down in the bottom there. And I don't know if you can see, there's two little holes and then the big hole. The, big, the two big holes are the discharge and the intake, and the two little holes are your drain holes. Everybody forgets to drain out the bottom section of their ditch pump. And so it does a nice smiley face crack there, and then I take about an hour and weld it back together for you so that you can have your pump put back together. Um, it's, it's actually cheaper to do that than it is to go buy a new pump. I think those pumps are about 300 bucks a piece and they don't just sell that case. The one thing I will say about if I do do a dish pump and you can share this with whoever you, uh, if you tell somebody is I'd like you to take all the hardware off of the, all the piping and all the stuff off of that so that I don't have to fix it when it breaks, if it breaks on me. So. Um, but I do anywhere from a dozen to a half a dozen, depending on the year of fixing those ditch pumps, 
for all the locals here in town. So um, pretty neat project. And this is a water tank, and I got two of them here. I built this one, and I found this one. This was at uh, uh, let's see, Don and Sue and Wilson, but Kenny Albright, actually, I believe, made this particular water tank. And what it is is on the on that downside over there is a firebox, and then there's a piece of four inch or six inch pipe inside of the water tank and then the chimney for your smoke to dissipate. And so it's a little less expensive kind of way to uh, do water for your animals outside. You don't necessarily have to have the, the propane line or things of that nature. Um, I wound up getting a hold of a big propane tank and cutting it out and kind of doing the same idea with it. Um, and we used uh, that tank for many years to water our cattle that we took care of there on our property. I actually have not quite a full acre of land on the northwest corner of, the, of town here. So I'm in, the, uh, I'm in town, but I'm kind of a farmer, a rancher if you want to, um, in regards to that. So it's been fun uh, being able to do that. There's my information. Um, it's, it's, it's actually, um, as far as welding goes, um, I've, I've honestly fixed, I told Dave when he walked in, I said, I'm glad you're here, I get to pick on you a little bit. Dave brought me an Alice Chalmers tractor um, that my predecessor, Tom Lyons, fixed about 20 years ago or so. And about eight years ago, Dave brought it back to me because he cracked the side of the block. I told Dave, I said, what did Tom tell you when he fixed it the last time? He said, well, if it breaks again, don't bring it back. <laughs> I said, all right, I'm going to fix it this time, but if it breaks again, don't bring it back. But no, but we do, we do things of that nature. I've, I've, I've fixed uh, hydraulic cylinders. Um, you know, the ends of the hydraulic cylinder will snap off if you get a little carried away with your hydraulic cylinder. And I, so I have to so I weld those back on. Um, Again, I do, like I said, structural steel. I do head gates as well. Um, I know in 1996, I believe, uh, they started pushing really hard for uh, more water control. And I know when I first started the shop back in 2001, we were probably pumping out somewhere in the tune of a dozen head gates a year, if not more. Um, and today we are maybe one or two a year. So they've kind of gotten most of the ditches and stuff in the county under control and, and taking care of things uh, in that regard. But we do do water structures. The biggest one I've ever done is up in Ohio Creek. It was a six foot tall box by six foot wide by six foot long with two big old wings. And, and I, it took us about 80 hours to build that rig. And it was, so it was pretty impressive. So, so water structures are, are something that I, I deal with as well. Um, repair work, I mean, if it's metal, most of the time I can fix it. About the only ones I don't have the capabilities of fixing is like the magnesium wheels. Um, I, that takes a special kind of gas or several gases, and it's pretty expensive to, you know, for some guy to bring me in one mag wheel and have me put it together for him. So. Uh, I also carry a line of steel. Um, I have um, flat stock, plate, uh, square and rect tubing, channel, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, a big resource uh, behind me out of Grand Junction that I use as my steel supplier. So um, most, of my, most of the time I can have it, I either have it or I can get it pretty darn quick for you uh, to get things put together. So. Uh, the other thing I wanted to recommend is I'm, I'm also all about helping uh, someone with their project if they, you know, they're doing it on their own. Makes sense to me. I, you know, I, I like to save money just as much as everybody else. So um, <coughs> I, I, I don't mind doing some consulting with you. And usually somebody comes in and orders, you know, big old chunks of steel and stuff. And I'm like, so what you doing? And they're like, um... Well, hey, can we talk about that? And I'm like, sure. You know, we'll sit down and draw a picture, and I'll kind of give them some ideas to help them uh, get that sort of thing put together. So, uh, consulting uh, in that regard, 
also helping them get to a resource uh, that I may know that they didn't know um, so that you guys can, you know, get your projects or whatever taken care of. So um, that's kind of welding in Gunnison. Um, we've been busy as all get out. It's, it's uh, crazy building up north. And so we've been doing a lot of structural steel and things of that nature uh, over the last four or five months. Uh, so it's been pretty fun to do that. So any questions? Okay. Was that long enough? Yeah. Too long? No. Too short? We'll keep rocking and rolling. Just right. Uh, Just right. Thank you, guys. No. Thanks, Chuck. Really appreciate it.